listen to eight pitches. I don't know about you, but I find that time has flown because they are so excellent, each and every one of them. But finally, I think we've had a long week. How many of you have had a long week? Yes? Okay, I think we need a lot of the next startup, which is in a completely different realm, coming from Australia, talking to us about mental health. Let's welcome Derfla from Virtual Psychologist. Over to you, Derfla. Thank you, thank you everyone. Lucky last. So, hi. As people said, my name is Derfla Lockney. I'm the CEO and founder of Virtual Psychologist. Let me take you on a journey. Back in 2017, I was working as a psychologist and I got called into a school where a young man had taken his own life. Next to him was his mobile phone. With the help of the police, we checked his phone records and no attempt had been made by this man to reach out for any help. And I asked myself, what was so confronting for this young man that he couldn't ask for help? Could a simple text message have saved his life, and that started our purpose. So this man is not alone. At any one time globally, 45% of the world is suffering from a mental health problem, and that figure is actually higher in Asia. But you know what the irony is? 54% of those people never ever reach out for help. You know what, because maybe mental health is too stigmatized. For some people, it's too confronting. It's too embarrassing. It's too inconvenient. Or maybe it's simply unavailable. But since offering our services, we found that people say 67% of those people that have engaged in our services have said without text counseling, they would never have reached out for help. Here in Asia, Naluri has shown that people are seven times more likely to engage in tech services than any other mode. So we believe if you can't talk, just text, and that's our solution. We provide text counseling, and that can be through SMS, Facebook Messenger, or WhatsApp. But we've gone a step further, and we've integrated video and audio services. But you know what, that wasn't enough. We needed to be proactive because you can't separate the mind from the body and we've integrated wearable technology. So for all of you walking around with Apple Watches, Google, Fitbit, Aura Rings, we're able to track sleep, activity, and heart rate variability. And from there with that data, we can coach on things like weight loss, productivity, and stress management because we know a healthy workforce is a productive workforce. So, how does this all work? It's really simple. You start with the QR code that could be on the internet, could be on a poster, it could be on a stress board. You scan it, you come into our service where you can integrate your wearable technology into our platform. You go through a self-service where you can book with the coach if you want to, or you can just stop there and look through content. If you choose to book, you can come through to a coach through text, video, or audio. It's totally multimodal. Then at the time of your session, you get one hour real time with a real person. After that, you can book another session with the same coach, or you can change coaches if you want, and you can control that booking system. Throughout the week, you get reminders about your appointments. We have service in country of origin for data privacy. So whatever country you're in, we can do the relevant service, and we're HIPAA and GDPR compliant. So what's our traction to date? We're in three countries, Australia, New Zealand, and the Philippines. We deliver services to GLOBE, we've done Optus, and uh, during COVID, we had 260 corporate companies that provided services to. We also service provided for the Australian government. We serviced 420,000 users and exchanged over 1.8 million messages. We've got a global team of leaders based in Australia, in India, and the Philippines. And we have access to 10,000 mental health professionals globally because we are the Uber of psychology. So what are we asking for? 
Our ask today is really simple. We want to ask Sintel directly to run a 12-month pilot. Our go-to-market strategy is really simple. We want to start with Sintel staff and then build up after we run the pilot to offer the services to their customers. And in the customer service option, we want to bundle the planned options with their wearable technology sales. And we want to form a shared revenue model. We ask not just Sintel, but any company out there to join us because our mission is we imagine a world where anyone can access hope. Thank you. Well needed. I think everybody has been running themselves ragged this past week or more. Had it from Optus. Thank you, Dr. Um, question Can you give some examples, maybe one or two examples, of data that you've collected with corporates that's helped the corporate? Thanks, Helen. Great question. So, we collect a lot of data, but we don't share that data if you can identify individuals. All the data is aggregated data. So some of the data that we can provide back to organizations that use our service is things about presenting problems. What's the stress levels within a company? What's the anxiety levels within the company? Say depression levels within the company. We're also able to tell them what is the sleep of their stock? But we can go quite granular. We can tell the company what day of the week their stress levels are peaking among staff. We can even boil down to what hour of the day that there's higher stress levels. So for example, we're able to tell a company if they have a, a big presentation, we can tell a company we saw the spike in, in anxiety leading to that. Like I said, the, that data, we don't share it if it's identifiable. One of the things we also do with data, because we're, we're a large global company and we've delivered services uh, right across the world, is we can inform government about where they need to spend their resources to provide mental health services. Thanks. Heidi, on top of yourself. Okay, uh, definitely. Uh, the goal of enhancing uh, workplace well-being and productivity is incredible. Uh, could you share some success stories or examples of how the virtual technologies has been on individual well-being and work performance, and what we share about comes have been achieved. Maybe some results on the impact you have made on individual well-being and work performance. So down to the individual now, not just performance. Okay. So the, the individual we range from a reactive, save them from high levels of anxiety and nearly quitting their job, to being able to help people thrive and flourish. So when we first started and we were just tech services, we were very much in that reactive. We, we were coming in with people that just before that big meeting they had high anxiety levels and we were able to work with them to reduce those anxiety levels. But since introducing wearable technology, we moved into a better space where we were able to do thrive and flourish. We were able to work with individuals and make sure that they're reaching their peak performance level within a workplace. So we've certainly spanned a, a spectrum. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, we've been going since 2017. I have hundreds, or if not thousands of stories that I could share with you where we've made a difference. And within a corporate sector, it could be something as simple as someone wanting to quit their job to people's lives that we've saved. Um, so we certainly, from my point of view, and I'm very proud to say, have a very, very strong social impact. Yeah, so we're really going from the reactive to the predictive and preemptive to helping them flourish. Rohit, Pete, any questions for you? Oh, Pete. Yeah, I have one question. Yeah, um, so, so I was wondering, uh, from the point of view of the psychologists that you partner with, is there a difference between seeking the, the patient and the psychologist face-to-face or virtual versus body messages? Okay, so is there a big difference between seeing a psychologist face-to-face -face in person versus seeing a psychologist online? Okay. What a great question, thank you. And people often say to me that face-to-face -face services are much better than text-based services. I've been a psychologist for 25 years. 
and I say I disagree with that. Certainly when it comes to men and youth, people will tell me more via text in the first 10 minutes than as a psychologist if I am sitting with them face to face. Because text-based counseling is non-confronting, it's non-embarrassing, and it's really convenient. And we've got all the figures to prove that. So my, my answer to you, and thank you for such a great question, is, you know what, face-to-face has always been the gold standard, but it's not the best standard. And as, we, as our uh, research has shown here in Asia, it's seven times more likely that people will engage using text than face-to-face -face services or phone-based services. So thank you. Thank you for that. I think the data speaks for itself, as you said. Rohit, or Pete, any formal questions? Okay, coming back to our judges in person. Dr. Or, please. Let's go back to the, uh, to the page that we were talking about with CTO, please. It's, it's none of that. No, the page that you wanted uh, to read. down, about CTO. Yeah, about CTO. Uh, 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 about CTO, uh, to uh, down, uh, forward, yeah. Uh, right. Right. Okay. Uh, but you said that you were 12 on pilot. So can you tell me more specifically like what is the pilot, what's the service? Uh, okay. How do you, what, what, what tell us more about the pilot? How exactly do you plan to run it? Okay, so thank you. So what we're looking at doing is running a 12-month pilot with the Singtel staff. So all Singtel staff can access our services, whether they want to engage their wearable technology with our services, or just use text-based services. And we're going to run that service and provide a proactive and reactive service for all staff to prove that our service actually works from a mental well-being point of view. Using this data, we then want to be able to turn around to Sectel and say, take this to your customers. And we want to bundle that in an option, certainly when it comes to wearable tech, is to say to Sectel's uh, wearable tech, give our services for three months as a part of a, uh, an introductory offer. And when people sign up, when they buy a, a wearable tech device from Sectel, they get our services. And then from there, we want to be able to do a shared revenue model that we build this into a product service offering. Yeah. A little bit like that free Amazon Prime three months trial and they, where they sign on to be a Singtel customer or buy a new wearable device. Yeah, but starting from staff and then spinning out from there. Great. Thank you for that question, Dr. Orton. Any final thoughts or questions from our judges? If not, I think that's also about the time we have. Thank you so much, Dr. Orton, for virtual psychologists. What a great stand on reminding us to also take care of our health and make use of the wearables, the data to integrate hardware and software. So with that, can you join me in congratulating all of our nine startups? I think they've done phenomenally, and I hope you agree with me. And thank you also to all the different associates from our six countries and our judges for journeying with them across the Singtel group. Now our judges are going to go ahead and have a tough job of deliberating who gets to walk away with the top six prizes. But meanwhile, we're gonna have, actually we're gonna have a 30 minute break. We'll give you a little bit more time for refreshments and to talk to the startups. So I'll see you back at the time out about 4.30. So I'll see you back at 5.10. Oh sorry, at five o'clock. At five o'clock, let's regather and that's when the results will be released. And we're gonna take a huge group picture at the end, so stay tuned the end. So meanwhile, grab a refreshments, 30 minutes, Chat with the startups, they are a fantastic bunch, professionally and personally. And don't forget, we are going to close this by 4.45. We're going to close the people's vote $10,000 in 15 minutes. So first, before you eat or during your talk, can I invite all of you to scan this QR code? Super important. Please cast your vote. We mean it. There is no rigging on the back end. Majority wins and your favorite startup gets the $10,000. We will be closing this poll at 4.45 sharp in 15 minutes. So scan it, vote now, and then let the networking fund begin. I'll see you back at 5 o'clock. Well done again, startups.